Hey what's up guys, Love to here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a quick, after about 3 weeks, review of the Fanatec V3 pedals. Um, I, this is going to be a complete rambled review. I'm going to try and get a couple of points across. This is more of just like my quick thoughts. I've got a couple of things coming in the next couple of days and one thing that's already here. And I don't want to forget about the pedals, so I wanted to quickly get my thoughts down on them. Um, I will come back to it. I'll, I've got um, some performance kit and the damper kit as well, which I'll come back to. I'll do a review on those as well. But this is just reviewing quickly the the bass pedals as they come out of the box. So first things first, obviously the way they look, they look incredible in my opinion. Um, I've been using the CSL Elite pedals, which you can see just down here, uh, for quite a while. They're quite wide, the CSL Elites. Um, you can you could got a lot of sideways adjustment though, which is a which is a good thing I guess on the CSLs. Uh, but on the V3s, God, they just look fantastic. Uh, I haven't got the faceplates on there yet, so the uh, extended faceplates, I will be using those. Um, and they do come in the box as standard, but I did want to use the faceplates that come with the, uh, the V3s pre-installed for a while just to get the most bog standard feeling you can get for this part of the review. So overall design, aluminium build, really thoroughly impressed with the build of these pedals. I don't see anything really going wrong with these. Uh, they're, they're very, very solid. So there are a lot of adjustments you can do, but I'm not going to go into detail with them in this video. Um, it's mostly, I just wanted to show you, like I said, complete bog standard out of the box. Um, aside from the brake pedal pressure adjustment, which I will show you. Uh, other than that, I'm not going to take the bottom base plate out, the foot rest plate, sorry. Uh, I'm not going to take that out and make any throw adjustments or anything like that. They don't say you can do it. Uh, there are no guides for it, but it is possible to adjust the throw. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail with that uh, in this video. This is purely, like I said, out of the box. What do they feel like? And that's kind of how I wanted to make this, this video. Um, and I can safely say, out of the box, the throttle pedal feels really nice. It's got a very decent um, resistance to it. Uh, I would like it a little bit uh, harder, sorry, not softer. I'd like it a little bit harder, that's my personal preference. That's again something we're going to be talking about is uh, a lot of this adjustment wise can be done to your personal preference and that's when we come into the realm of subjectivity. Uh, you might like it, I might not. I might love it, you might not. That's the that's the, the world we're going to have to, the line we're going to have to tread to try and try and get both points across and seeing which is which is more beneficial for everyone really um so first of all the throttle nice resistance the spring back is a lot nicer than the csl elites obviously the spring on there uh, not quite as strong this resistance and the uh rebound spring really really nice uh, it does come with another one so there's the red spring in there at the moment and then the black spring also is then in there that's the the stronger resistance it also gives you a, a better gives you a better return spring feeling uh it's quicker to the return so as should also mentioned they're using hall effect sensors on the throttle pedal and the clutch uh over a potentiometer a hall effect sensor is definitely better it basically lasts forever all it means really is that uh, you've got a little magnet on there that's detecting the motion effectively it's a lot more complicated than that and i'm not doing the science justice so the clutch pedal has a bite point um i at first thought that would be a bit gimmicky actually in use you do notice it but not enough to where it's distracting you notice it to the point where it's actually quite helpful uh, to find out where you want to have your foot on the clutch or how far you want to put the clutch down so you're not fully engaged and just kind of revving the engine or you're not like just about getting the clutch in and you're still moving forward or you stall it or whatever you can still feel where you're supposed to kind of have it which is really really good for a uh, non racing games in a sense so like a truck sim you can kind of feel where the clutch is you can normal driving in that sense uh, but i would also say that it's quite handy in rally as well i have found that i can quickly put my foot down to the certain point where i can feel it disengaging getting that shift done and then bringing it back up again without fully engaging the clutch having to like slam all the way to the end uh, so that is quite handy as well right now onto the brake pedal so we have a 90 kilogram load cell pedal Load cell pedal or uh, load cell in general basically means that the sensor is picking up how much load is coming through the pedal, um, turning that into a digital signal, which is then going onto uh, obviously your computer or your game and sim of choice. Other than that, there's not really much you need to know about load cells. This one on the V3s, you've got a twist uh, at the back. So basically you twist it to the strength you want it between one and five uh, and 
yeah, really, really simple to get the, um, the strength up, basically. If you want more resistance, you turn it up onto five. If you want it to be really soft and squidgy, you turn it onto one. I've got it set to three at the moment. It's a little soft for me still. I would like it a little bit harder, but going up to five, it, it, for me, I don't want to mess around with it too much because it's only got two, you've got two uh, foam pieces inside the brake, inside the brake tube. And that is basically what's causing some of the resistance. Some of the resistance I say, cause obviously you can adjust it with the, uh, with that dial there as well. Look, I'm going to go into the like saying that this pedal, I prefer personally, like I said, subjectivity, I personally prefer a stronger pedal, which is why I bought the brake performance kit. Um, but some people might prefer the softer pedal. I mean, for when I was using Dirt Rally, uh, for an example, uh, when I was using that, I was enjoying the softer pedal um, to be able to adjust it a little bit more and get a little bit further onto the pedal so I can make adjustments, especially for um, kind of going in high speed, braking a little bit, and you just want to have a little bit of dampening on that to get the car slowed down just a little bit better. I found that with the softer pedal, it was a lot easier to kind of modulate because um, you're doing a lot of on-off, on-off with uh, dirt rally in my in my case i was doing a lot of dirt rally um and then the heel and toe action was a lot easier as well um with the stiffer, pe stiffer pedal you can do that you can do the heel toe you can do the modulating because it's all based on pressure not on distance but i found that getting that extra distance going i could feel it a bit better so if you are more into the dirt side and you are currently using something like the g29 pedals or the uh, t3pas uh, going to something like this would actually be not similar because it's a completely different kettle of fish uh it is a really really different feeling but it's more akin to what you're used to with the with the like travel you've got a look a little bit more travel um on the pedal so that could be what you want i personally like i said prefer the stiffer pedal so i'll be putting the brake performance kit in but not in this video <laughs> yeah so i have it quite a higher strength um just to get a little bit more resistance um make the make the pedal heavier uh, which is what I prefer. Also, I will make note that with the 90 kilogram load cell pedal that you will encounter, unless your uh, rig is quite sturdy, you will encounter some flex. Um, I have noticed even on my rig, I've got the Simtech K2. Um, I've noticed that when I'm pushing hard on the brake pedal, that my pedal plate does flex and it does bow. Um, and that was something that I didn't really experience with the CSL elites, um, but I have noticed with the, with the V3s. I guess they're slightly more solid in construction. Uh, with the beam coming across the back and the front where it's all connected whereas i probably wasn't using the csl elites to maximum i think i was using the 65 kilogram um polyurethane bumpers that in that case i i would say that so the v3s you would definitely want to put on a more solid rig but keep that in mind if you are going to mount these make sure that the pedal plate is solid bonus feature uh, on the brake and throttle pedals you get a vibration motor I don't think a lot of people are talking about these when they review these pedals uh, the vibration motors I have actually found found that they have added to the immersion they don't give me a lot more information they're not like they're going to be game changers in the way that you you drive or anything the brake pedal possibly I mean I've set mine up so that once I hit 70% on my brake pedal they'll start vibrating letting me know because usually in a car I mean you can set them up per car per whatever but it's a lot of effort for me so I just put it on 70% <laughs> I'm lazy you gotta remember this I'm lazy I put it on 70% that'll start to vibrate letting me know that I'm coming close or I've reached or I've overtaken my ABS limit um, or point where I would lock up so that is like my lock up warning so when I get to that point it'll let me know I might lock up or I'm hitting basically the amount of pressure that I want to be hitting and then it'll vibrate let me know which is really really handy and the same on the throttle uh, I haven't found the throttle to be as useful it's more of just like a kind of that's cool kind of feature um, so I've set it to obviously when I get to max rpm um, in the gear it'll vibrate let me know I haven't noticed it I found that once you've hit maximum travel on the throttle uh, the vibrations get really, really nullified. They kind of just get muted and you can't really feel the vibrations at all, really. Um, it's only about half throttle is when you can really notice that the vibrations are going. So, I mean, using that as a, you're hitting max revs, it's not really useful. So I've turned up um, curbs and like all the other stuff to, to be really high so that I can still feel the throttle pedal vibrating because it's a feature that I want to know and like I want to use. So I've, I've turned that up so that any curbs or bumps or anything, the vibrations go through my foot. I get to know it and it's an extra bit of feeling, which I think is really quite handy. Um, as an immersion side of things, not again, again not for a, a practical 
getting good at the game type thing. It's an immersion thing. There's no other real bells and whistles on this, but in these set of pedals, they are they are pretty much a set of pedals with Hall effect sensors and a load cell with a couple of vibration motors that feel pretty damn nice. Now, other than that, there's not really much else to talk about. Uh, it plugs pretty much very easily into into your wheel or via USB into your PC. Um, if you were using it on a PlayStation or Xbox or whatever, you want to have that plugged into your wheelbase. It's the only way it'll work. Um, mounting was really simple. I don't really want to go into how to mount it all and all that. So the only reason I'm doing this as a quick out of the box review is because you can also get the, the damper kit and also the brake performance kit. So that's why I wanted to do a review on um, the pedals as they come and then go on and do another review on the brake performance kit and the dampener uh, separately. So that about wraps it up. I mean, the construction's great. The pedals feel really nice. They are adjustable. The brake pedal is adjustable as well. Exactly what you want. I haven't really found a flaw with them. <laughs> and that's like, I, I. some people are thinking, oh, he's got Fanatec everything. He's got Fanatec. They just do the best stuff for the budget like that I have. Also, I do want to make this abundantly clear. Uh, Fanatec has not sent me, sent me anything. I have bought all of this with my own money. Uh, I just kind of, I thought that their ecosystem was really well thought out. Uh, the way you can connect all your peripherals and well, I've got my shifter and my handbrake pedals. They all go into the wheelbase and then that one USB to the computer a, it just saves a lot of time and you know, cables, <laughs> um, but also it's just it makes it really clean looking and I really like a clean kind of rig. Um, that's why I went with Fanatec. They haven't given me any money or sent any of this out for me for free. Uh, I And I, they're not paying me again to make a positive review. I really like these pedals. I don't think I would have bought them if I didn't. And if you are on the fence about getting a, a, a around 300, 400 pound set of pedals, then I mean, if you want to go for the CSLs and save yourself some money, they are still a good set of pedals. The V3s, you do get a little bit more. Right, if you have any questions about these pedals, feel free to leave a comment and I'll uh, I'll try and come back to you. I try and respond to every comment as well. So like I said, if you've got any questions, I will I will try and get to it. Uh, other than that, that's the Fanatec V3s. Subscribe to the channel to get notified when I upload the video on the uh, second part of my review, where I'm going into the adjustment and also changing the pedal faces, as well as adding the performance kit and the damper kit. I'll do that all in one video um, as like the best the V3s can get. That's the best the V3s can get. That's a UK joke if you're not, yeah. Um... <laughs> But yeah, the best the V3s can get. If you're wondering why I didn't go through the um, the setup phase on the computer or however, uh, getting these updated and everything, they're pretty self-explanatory. Again, I just wanted to do a quick overview of my thoughts. Didn't really want to go into the full details. And, and yeah, I kind of wanted to keep this video a little shorter. But yeah, if you like this video, give it a like. If you really like, subscribe and play with that notification bell to be notified whenever I upload a video, whenever that may be. And yeah genuinely really enjoy these pedals they're really fun to race with really fun to drive with in general and uh and yeah for me it was money well spent so so yeah i'm 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 enjoying these pedals all right enough of me talking about uh random stuff at this point um thank you guys for watching all right cheers guys